I'm Justy. Welcome back to The Skeptiest, an ongoing series of videos in which I discuss the concepts of science and philosophy. Who am I? Well, that's irrelevant for the purposes of today's discussion. But if you are interested, here's the sort of thing I like to do. Check this out! Now that's out of the way, let's talk about today's episode, The Joy of Science. Today you'll hear about quantification, falsification, and finally, the joy of science. Let's get started. I'm here with Jarrah Ray and we're about to dig into this issue of what is unquantifiable by science. And Jarrah is uniquely qualified to answer this question having just written a paper on it. So go for it, Jarrah. <laughs> science should be able to measure anything that affects you. If it can affect you, have an effect on the physical world, then science can analyse it. That's what science is about. And people talk about things you know, that are untestable by science. I really challenge people to find an example of such a thing. It's all very well to have an, un uh, an unfalsifiable hypothesis, um, but where, where it becomes relevant is when you try and tie that to, say, a medicinal remedy. So this thing operates with a mechanism that we can't explain, but we're going to sell it to you and claim that it's going to cure some ailment. I think, yeah. I think the key point with that is that you're, you're measuring the effect of something on the physical world that science can measure anything that has an effect on the physical world. If it doesn't have an effect on the physical world, how the hell do you know it's happening? Absolutely. There's no way that it would be relevant to us. I think I've heard that referred to as a poetic reality. Yes. So the simple answer there is that things that can be quantified by science are things that, of which claims can be made that are falsifiable. One aspect of science that's often misunderstood is the notion of falsification. It sounds like a negative thing, but actually it's one of the benefits of science. A claim is falsifiable if it can be proven to be false. So what's so important about this? Well, if a claim can't be falsified, it means that any number of fanciful, often supernatural, explanations may be posited for why that phenomena occurs. Why is this a problem? Well, it's a problem because anything can be made up. The ones that don't matter are things such as people's personal opinions or works of fiction or internal feelings or visions. But the things that do matter, of course, are claims that are made about the physical world. And they may, for example, include medicinal claims. So what is the joy of science? Well, the joy of science is having a mindset that is not dogmatic, that is free of supernatural superstitions, and that unites you with your fellow human beings. And it's a joy of making things work, making things better. Now another joy of science I'd like to talk about very quickly is knowledge. And I don't just mean the acquisition of more and more knowledge, which is, which is of course very important and very joyful, but I also mean the quality of knowledge, the quality of your knowledge acquisition process. In other words, and to get a bit skeptical, how do you know that you're not fooling yourself when you learn something new, or when you come up with a hypothesis for why something might occur? give you a great example and a very simple one which demonstrates the point. Up the road for me there's a street lamp and I've noticed on a number of occasions when I've gone for night walks that this street lamp turns off when I go near it and indeed it turns on when I go near it and it's very easy to jump to the you know possible conclusion that I had some effect on it that I have quote unquote powers that might affect it. Um, the reality of course and the, there's two tiers of knowledge here one is electric and electronic and I have, have that sort of knowledge but I don't even need that sort of knowledge the only knowledge I need to, uh, to have is one that can be obtained through simple observation so one night I got my timer out and I timed how long the light was on timed how long the light was off and sure enough it became very apparent that it was on for around about 47 seconds and off for around 25 seconds 24 seconds so armed with that knowledge just as someone in the past who was armed with the knowledge of when eclipses might occur, um, you can see very easily how um, people can be fooled by their lack of that knowledge. 
And this, of course, gets off the topic somewhat into aspects of human nature. But it's pretty easy to see that if you were a fairly uh, mischievous person, you could capitalise on your knowledge and the lack of uh, other people's knowledge um, in order to you know, give a perception that you had some sort of power, or indeed to fool yourself into thinking you had such a power. And this uh, relates, of course, to the whole thing of confusing correlation with causation. Um, every time I've walked past there, this thing has happened, it's just gone on and off, because it, it does this, you know, it does this whether I'm there or not, but because I'm there observing it, it's very, you know, it's forgivably easy um, to, to, at least for a fleeting moment, think that I had some effect on it. And this, of course, is what magicians, I mean real magicians, uh, take advantage of. They take advantage of um, the, the default mental attributes that we have as human beings and the, the foibles thereof. But that's one of the joys of science is that we can, we can split those two issues apart. We can go to a magic show and, and enjoy being fooled and we can also go um, to our doctor and enjoy not being fooled. Science in its most basic form can just be observation. You can do science without big scientific you know, technology and machinery. You can just do science by yourself. Just observing something is a very, very basic form of science, but it is still science. Remember, science is not a noun so much as it is a verb. It's an ongoing process that iteratively comes closer and closer to the truth. Science is not dogmatic, apart from simply being dogmatic about not being dogmatic. I'm here at the Tin Sheds Cafe to talk about the joy of science. Well, the, the joy I like in science is it gives you more reliable information than uh, other sources. Um, other sources may dogmatically tell you uh, that, that this is so, um, but then a lot of the time it turns out not to be. So any, anyway, I think this is, this is one of the great things about science is it moves away from dogmatism and, and that's one of the things that I find a, a joy. One of the great things I think about science and the joy of science is an amazing principle of flight. Lift plus thrust, which sounds like a bit sexy and that's probably why I'm saying it. Is it like, you know, basically you get enough chuff from a jet engine <laughs> and you put your flaps at the right angle and you go up. I think that's amazing. Hi, I'm Dr. Rachi and I work in medical research in heart disease, um, but also in ageing research. And my primary interest is in Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's and also motor neuron disease. I have a PhD from Sydney University Medical School and the thing I find that is the joy of science for me is the challenge of addressing an issue, finding a way to resolve it and the, re the rewarding part of it is finding a solution. And this can happen every day sometimes, sometimes it takes six months, but that's what I find so exciting about science is that it's so complex Every day you learn something new. Hi, I'm uh, Jo Ben Moo, also known as the Skeptical Nurse from the um, Australian Skeptics and the Skeptics Zone podcast. Um, I love science because science gives me a reason to wake up in the morning and look around me and ask questions about why things are the way they are without finding some explanation that makes no sense. Science reveals the way the universe works. Uh, our modern lives depend on science. Without science, the world would be a very different place. Of science. I'm Andrew. In the words of David Byrne, I'm an ordinary guy. I'm a guy with a brain and, a, and an opinion. Um, I look at the world around me and I am amazed by it. And sometimes I tell people how, I'm, how amazed I am by it. There's, there's one thing that really um, really does it for me in the awe factor. Um, and that's the website called the Astronomy Picture of the Day. APOD. We, we have the technology, we have the ability to construct a device that allows us to see these things. So Richard, I'm very interested in what the joy of science is for you. Do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, it, for me it's, now I know how it works. Now I know what makes this tick. You know, let's open it up and find out. Um, so we don't know yet, let's wait some years and we'll, we'll find out. And the older I get, I always think to myself, my God, I'm living in the future. You know, here it is, I, I've, I've waited and suddenly I'm living in the future where all these interesting things are being discovered about planets and about how the world really works and all sorts of things. What's the primary way that you uh, go about trying to impart that same joy of science to younger people? Oh, it's so easy. It's so easy. You just uh, spark their curiosity. Right. And the way I do it is with claims of the supernatural and the paranormal, which they're interested in anyway. Yeah. 
Every kid is interested in ghosts and UFOs and mysterious powers. Yes. You know, bam, you got it. We try to get their interest straight away by saying, we're going to discover how you can yeah. look at this yourself. Right. And what, what's the trick behind this? Well, here it is, and this is how it really works. Today's episode, The Joy of Science. Oh, bastard. The Joy of Flatulence. <laughs> Well done, mate. I'm here at the cafe with my still intact camera. Oh, you can. 